six, a helping hand with your land. Neil from Essex here to do a demonstration for you today using a new grapple that I got for the front of my tractor set up with some unique hydraulics here that are going to allow us to put a pressure gauge in line with the grapple to show some of the ways that your tractor's hydraulic system interacts with the attachments on the front of the machine. One of the things that bothers me sometimes um, when watching online Facebook groups and that kind of stuff is seeing some of the ways that grapples are celebrated in their way to be able to lift and manipulate silly loads. Um, it's great to see tractors out doing big things, but we get concerned sometimes about mechanically what that is doing to your machine and the kind of abuse that you might be putting back on your tractor when you do those kinds of things. So I'm gonna do a little science today. Um, walk around the machine here, show you how this hydraulic system works on my Kubota B2650 or 3350 and uh, show you exactly what happens when you do abusive types of work with a grapple. So we're gonna start with what the baseline hydraulic system pressure on your tractor is supposed to look like. The relief pressure on your machine, it's that pressure at which the hydraulic pump is pumping up to a maximum pressure and then stops, can vary from tractor to tractor, but for the most part, you're gonna find relief pressures in the neighborhood of 26 to 2,800 pounds, under 3,000 in most cases for sure. If I go through the different piece, <coughs> pieces here, the hydraulic system, you're going to see things that are kind of sized and rated for that kind of pressure. So while my tractor is going to create about 2,600 PSI of pressure, it's going to come out here to my WR long third function valve that's going to have a 5,000 pound working pressure. If I go across here and I look at the pressure ratings for these solenoid valves, for these hoses, these things are all rated for 5,000 PSI, which is high. These guys got an idea what you're going to be doing out here on the end. That is quite a bit higher than a lot of the other rubber hoses and stuff that you'll find on the machine. A lot of these small hydraulic hoses are generally 3,000 PSI hoses, and that's going to be the case for the ones that are out here on my grapple lid. Um, these smaller ones out here are 3,000 PSI. They come back here through a couple of 3,000 PSI hydraulic fittings. So my, my high working limit, kind of my, my upper rating for the pressure on my third function loop here, should be considered 3,000 PSI, even though I've got a couple components back here that will withstand five. So in order to demonstrate exactly what happens as we're operating these different hydraulic functions, I have a couple of additional hydraulic bits out here on the end of my tractor. Now this is an Artillion grapple. Got some other videos and stuff that talk about these grapples, but you're gonna notice that this one only has one lid on it. The Artillion grapples are modular. You can choose a whole bunch of different pieces, whether you want floors or double grapples or buckets or blades. There's a whole bunch of different things that can clamp onto this cool grapple system. I'm using one lid in order to open up this other coupler over here for this digital pressure gauge. This gauge has got a big number at the top and a small number at the bottom. So the big number is kind of the current pressure of the system. While the number that's on the bottom is able to show highs and lows. So it's gonna record a peak and that's what we're after when we're gonna be looking at what happens when I use the grapple. So we're gonna start the tractor up here and watch the numbers on the pressure gauge. To show what happens when we're operating our grapple. So as our lid goes up and down, I have the gauge on the closed circuit here and we close that lid and put pressure on it. We're gonna have a number here of the hydraulic pressure that the tractor was pushing out, and that topped out at 2,350 PSI on the dot, and it is uh, drifting down here slowly now as I have the tractor turned off. So that's the amount of pressure that's coming out here through the cylinder and being exerted down here in order to hold this grapple closed. Now, where I get concerned about the way that guys use their grapples is that if you look at this grapple right here, and you're say manipulating a really long log that's off center and is say underneath the grapple here and twisting and lifting this lid up, you're gonna cause this cylinder to work like a pump. It's gonna wanna compress this cylinder and push fluid from the cylinder back into the tractor, pressurizing the third function valve, the hoses, the tractor's hydraulic system, potentially way beyond what they were intended for. So that's gonna be our next step here. We're gonna go find some loads, start manipulating some things, and watch what I'm able to do to that max pressure number. So what we're 
going to do here with our grapple is approach this down tree over here and use the grapple in order to grab the tree and pull it backwards. And this is going to be the incorrect technique that you do not want to do with a grapple. And I'll very shortly show you why. So we start the tractor up here, pick our loader up here and come up to our log, close the grapple around it, break this thing loose, and we're going to curl this back and back up here a little bit. And Oh, we got hung up on our tree, right? Now that looked harmless enough, right? I wasn't even crashing around or being very forceful with the tractor. But if I come up here and I look at what happened to my hydraulic system, I pushed that up to 3,864 PSI, basically at idle, just knocking that thing off. And if you remember what we did before, just closing the jaw brought us up to 2,400. Now the reason for that is, is because of that action that I did where I had the tree pushing the lid of the grapple open and causing that hydraulic pressure to spike. That 3,500 pounds is peanuts compared to what you can do when you start really banging this thing around. Now our next demo here is going to be on this kind of twisted up stump and I picked this because I'm going for something that's basically immovable and or at the very limits of what your tractor is able to lift, pull, push against, whatever. So we're going to do very much the same thing. We're going to pop up here to this stump and again we're not going to use the what should be the right technique here. We're going to close that lid over top of it and start to pull this thing out and See if I can get this thing yanked out of the ground, right? I want to work my tractor around and see what I can do to break this out. Now, again, I could have been a lot more rough than that. But working up against that here, we come down here and see that we pop that the whole way up to 5,634 pounds. In preparing for this video, when I was working at this earlier, I was able to push that number up well over 6,500 PSI, double, or well over double, nearly triple what the tractor's hydraulic system is really operating at under normal conditions. So we're going to go for gold this time here, right? Uh, we're going to walk up to this stump. And again, take our grapple and work back here against the stump a little bit again. I'd, this is not good operating procedure, right? Trying to do education. Don't tell me that I'm doing this wrong because I know I am. And 6,226 pounds <laughs> right there just by clawing at that stump with the lid of the grapple. So clearly you can see what's happening here is that when, when the grapple lid is being forced open and the reverse would happen as well if it was being forced closed, if I had my gauge on the other side of the hydraulic system, right? Say you were using that grapple to ram into something. When you're forcing the grapple lids opened or closed, those cylinders are acting as a pump and pushing that pressure back into your tractor. You're gonna see problems develop in that from a couple different ways. If you end up with say, hoses that are leaking or solenoid valves that start sticking open or closed, all those things can be damaged that could be happening to your tractor and your hoses because of the way that grapple is being used. And in all likelihood, you're not gonna see that damage showing up on the grapple. It's gonna be showing up in other areas of your hydraulic system. So you could be doing damage to the tractor or the third function or other things because of the way those grapples are built. So surely you say there is a solution to this problem, right? The industry has to have a fix or a catch for this kind of scenario where we can cause these hydraulic spikes to fly back into the piece of equipment. And this is happening here just with my little 30 horsepower compact tractor, right? When we start talking 12,000 pound track loaders that are out doing demolition work and tearing up concrete and that kind of stuff, these numbers only get bigger and they go bigger fast. I've heard from manufacturers spikes as high as 30,000 PSI when you start to get up to these bigger machines. And there is a solution. If you follow me back around over here, in our rental fleet, we choose to run grapples from FFC, a paladin company. And if you look on the back side of their grapples, you'll see this extra hydraulic manifold back here. The cylinders from the lids feed back into this manifold and then two hoses come out of here that go back to your machine. 
What's inside of this manifold is a check valve. It opens up these valves when fluid is flowing in from the machine, pre prevents fluid from the cylinders from being pushed back into the unit, protecting that larger expensive equipment from those hydraulic shocks. Now, this is something that I've only ever seen on these larger construction oriented grapples and only from the better reputable domestic companies. If you're looking at smaller compact tractor grapples, I'm not aware of anybody who does this today or any kind of imported stuff. You never will see this on grapples that are targeted for say price points. They're on your good premium equipment that's really made to last. So a lot of what we showed here today is improper technique for how you're using that grapple. The lids that are on these things are really here in order to secure those loads as you're moving them around. And you wanna be very careful that while you're using your grapple, you're not lifting loads that are off center that are gonna be pushing the grapple lids open, or you're gonna be using them in any kind of function that's gonna be ramming or grabbing or pulling at them. They're there to secure things, that is all. Be careful with what you're doing. And you can see why I get a little concerned. There are particular grapple manufacturers that seem to celebrate some of those uh, guys that may be doing things in poor practice, right? Picking up loads that are way too heavy for their tractor, for their grapple, picking up things that are really huge and off center that is doing damage to your machines. Be careful with what you're doing. Your tractor is not a bulldozer. So not telling you not to buy grapples. They are one of my favorite attachments. I cannot believe the amount of work that I can get done out here with this thing. It has changed my productivity in huge ways and really has become way more common on the front of my tractor than what my dirt bucket is. I use this thing all the time. Very, very quickly have come to like it a lot. So if you're thinking of adding a grapple to your tractor, don't let me scare you away from doing that. We're happy to hook you up with grapples, third function kits, everything that you need in order to do this on your tractor. Just be educated in how you use the thing and think about the ways that that hydraulic system is working and what can be happening to your machine. So if you have parts needs for equipment you already have or you're shopping for a piece of equipment, give us a call at Messix. We're available at 800-222-3373 or online at Messix.com. I didn't think it was going to come out of the ground. <laughs> All right. Let's go find another one, a different one.